double sheet bend. So this is a great example of like the simplest it gets. Your jump ropes are here, you know, main back up, you're tying to both of those. You've got your span here. You can use a single rope for this as well. You just run one through, double sheet bend like a, a big bite. So if anyone who's not sure on this system or method, having both ropes go through one anchor point, uh, the idea is that the bend radius here is so big that the strength of the rope is retained almost its, its full potential. Uh, you know, at least, at minimum, it's retained the same as putting a single figure eight and another figure eight. Um, and as that tensions up, it's tighter and tighter. It still remains really easy to undo at the end of the day. All you need to do is loosen that, and it's done. Now, for reference, the rope, the loop, started about there, and it's stretched all the way out to there. Now you can take it apart and see what this bit here looks like. It still looks fine. Tension's just slowly dropping because that rope just keeps stretching out. So I've just taken that out of there. This is the knot. And this is untying it with one hand. There we go. One hand. One hand to untie a knot that got loaded to 10 kn. Looks pretty good to me. Rope also looks pretty good. strand coming out of there. So, obviously it's possible to connect webbing as well. I would suggest a main loop and a backup main loop, both twin tensioned. Uh, I would say a really stretchy webbing is obviously better than a more static one, but overall webbing of any kind is honestly going to be better than rope. This is mostly because of the dynamic properties that it, the ropes hold, like they don't recover as quickly after a certain jump, like it takes maybe a number of hours as opposed to a number of minutes before their full elasticity returns. So you get harsher and harsher jumps the, the quicker in succession the jumps are, which you know obviously the idea is to have as many jumps as possible, as fast as possible. So yeah, when you're connecting loops, I would say loop with a uh, shackle straight through there and same with backup through both. If you only connect to one, there's obviously a risk that it could pull all the way through it's unlikely, but I would say the best option is for sure to connect with a shackle through both. With this method here, you know, simple rope swing, tie roll lines, got your jump ropes. You can increase, you can add this retrieval line. This is the Ryan Jenks Tamatala method, I believe. I think he invented this at least. And so the idea behind this, you can still do this just the same as with a regular reading plate. And so you've got your whole line here.
really important that your ring here is not too heavy, uh, so not too big. We've used bomber rings here before and they've slid up past this and they're not wanted to come back down. So you actually want like medium size rings or even smaller, I mean, you don't want it too small. Um, you know, 12 mil shackle also works. You want to tape it obviously closed so it can't just spin open when it's traveling down the line. Um, the heavier the better, so you know, two taped together. Two medium rings is honestly the best way to go. So those old steel rings are perfect. But a bomber ring is too big. This is the next evolution of the idea, which is to reduce the force further, you can incorporate pulleys here. See, the idea is this redirects the jump ropes off to the side, so that increases the amount of rope that can stretch in the system without increasing the length that the person free falls for. So you get a stretchier rope with the same amount of free fall. You start with the shortest rope possible, and then increase slowly. But this will increase the stretch and the softness of the catch for those swings where there is a lot of free fall, but a minimum amount of distance this tire lean is sitting away from the cliff. And so an interesting way of connecting these is it's a little bit annoying, but go hitch them on. And if you do this on both sides, can actually shorten one side compared to the other so that the two don't interact with each other. Uh, obviously girth hitch on one, girth hitch on the other. One seeing a little bit higher than the other. The idea there is that min minimizes the interaction. You've got jump ropes here, anchor over here, girth hitch on. Uh, obviously all of this can be applied with pulleys too. You can still have your retrieval system, your pulley to pull that back up, but the tagline obviously goes through there. I've gotten rid of it just to make it a little bit cleaner and easier to see. It's about as simple as that. There is something to watch out for, and that's that this anchor here, in the case of this jump, is going to be seen like one and a half times the load that it would normally be seen. And that's because this here is creating a 1.5 to 1 pulley system. Now, if you anchor this bit down on the ground, that's going to put a 2 to 1 pulley system on the entire anchor. So that's going to see like twice the load it regularly see. That'll also see twice the load it regularly sees. Now, why even bother with these pulleys in the middle here? Obviously, increasing the length of the jump rope here adds more stretch, reduces the fall factor on the person. It's an obvious benefit. But there is more. It means if the ground is accessible and you can hike back out of it, uh, it means adding a lowering system for the top is really easy and this can lead to really quick, fast jumps. Um, so the idea being that we don't need any tagline, we don't need any reset system like that. We can simply anchor these ropes here off to the side with some grigories. The person jumps, open up the grigories and lower them out to the ground. So obviously you can go further, one step further again. You just add in another pulley system, redirect the rope again. You can add another one, redirect it again, put your pulleys here, redirect it again, again if you want, and put your grigories there. All of a sudden, you've got a system where instead of getting this much stretch out of the rope, you're getting this much stretch out of the rope. You know, you obviously want to, um, as well, back up your pulley systems. It can be as simple as just clipping a beaner behind. You want this anchor to make sure that is ridiculously strong as well because every time you're redirecting it, you know, especially if you're redirecting it like that, you're creating a two to one pulley system. So that tree is not just experiencing the jump of the person once, it's experiencing twice their jump, you know, or more depending on how many times you redirect back to that same tree. Just like with these, and the Tyrol sees less force on this side, but more on this side. So you need to make sure that this anchor is then gonna be more than strong enough for it. Uh, obviously using dynamic ropes for the anchor can help reducing that shock as well but like I mentioned before with uh, webbing versus rope webbing recovers from that dynamic stretch much quicker than rope does you know rope takes a number of hours or days even to shrink back in and allow that elastic property back into it whereas you know webbing does that almost immediately 
So webbing is definitely preferred for this Tyrol line, but uh, it also has some disadvantages. What you want to do obviously is you know, have a twin tension webbing system because a single layer of webbing is not going to be strong enough or it's not going to be adequate for your safety factors. You know, if there's any sort of damage in it, some webbings can break as low as 12 or 13 km with a little bit of damage and all of a sudden, and you can actually generate that on big swings. So you need a twin tension webbing system and obviously twin tension webbing, we all know likes to flap crazily in the wind. So you have to back that up with rope underneath becomes a pain in the ass. So obviously if you can get extra stretch out of your system without also having to do a million other things with the webbing, this is one alternative. Using this with webbing and bungees, which is a whole other topic, you can really start to dial into a point where the webbing, the entire system is as stretchy and dynamic as possible. So you can get some really ridiculous freefall with, uh, with a very short distance from your tie roll. You know, your jump point could can be like well above your tie rolling point and not very far away from it. So you can have this huge free fall with very little swing at the bottom if you can add enough dynamicness, dynamicity to the system. So here's the next part of the rig obviously. You've got your anchors, the two grigries. I would say best way to lower out a system like this is have one person control both the hands, both the ropes, and then one person control both the handles. It's much easier than one person trying to control this and one person trying to control that. So there's some pros and cons to this method. Ideally you have the perfect length of this rope here to be able to just start lowering it out, lower them all the way to the ground, no worries. If your rope here, however, isn't long enough because you've got a really high cliff and the distance for them to be lowered off the end of the swing to the ground is, is really big, you're probably not going to have enough dynamic rope here. You know, we're talking like jumps of 100 metres or so where longest bit of dynamic rope you can get, maybe you can get a 200 metre and fold it in half or two 200 metres. It gets expensive fast. You know, realistically, most you're most likely to have a couple 80 metre ropes at about the longest around. Um, so 80 meters will give you, you know, 80 meters of jump total if you tie it straight into there. But if you want to go bigger than that, you're going to have to tie these ropes off and start a new one. Because this whole system eats up more rope than you'd expect. Uh, you know, obviously the more rope you have, the softer the catch. So you want as much rope as possible. You know, say you tie two 80 meters to there, you put a span set here, double sheet bend the ropes in, double sheet bend the next 80 meters out of there, and then they continue through the system. Obviously you're limited how much you can lower by how far this rigging plate moves forward. It'll hit here eventually. So it's better to lower off this first stage first because you can go as long as your ropes are, but then they'll hit a tail eventually, and then you'll have to engage the second stage. The second stage is limited obviously by how far this is, or if you don't have this at all, it's limited by how far away your anchor is from there. It's a bit disconcerting to lower out, to let go of your grigries out into space. Um, so make sure you've got all your distances right because the person could be left five meters off the ground. Uh, there you go, so that's your two-stage lower out system.